does your partner ignore you, give you the silent treatment, or draw a blank when you ask him to share his feelings? Or maybe she spends so much time working that it seems she's married to her laptop. Or does he dismiss you when you try to share your feelings? Maybe you've been accused of being needy or clingy. If so, I imagine that you feel lonely and abandoned and afraid that they're just not that into you. In this video, I'm going to share three strategies that have worked for me and my clients to help their partner come out of their shell and open up emotionally and have you feeling close again. I'm Valerie Green. And I help couples stop fighting and experience love, intimacy, and passion again. And my partner used to withdraw until I learned these insights. What you might be surprised to know is about 50% of the population tends to get caught in a pattern of either becoming demanding or withdrawing during conflict. When couples start to feel disconnected, one partner starts making demands and being clingy to try to feel close again, which causes the other partner to feel trapped and controlled, so they pull away more. One partner is called needy, and the other is accused of being emotionally unavailable. Does this sound familiar? It's a vicious cycle that's very hard to break on your own because you're too close to it to see it. So here's how I got my partner to stop withdrawing. I learned that most withdrawers have certain needs and fears in common. And when you give them what they need, the ice melts, and they feel safe and loving again. Because they're not aware of their feelings, most withdrawers don't know they have these needs and fears. So let me explain a little bit about what might be going on inside of them. So you stop taking it personally, and you can give them what they need to feel safe enough to open up. Often partners who withdraw learn to shut down their feelings as children, because their family or culture said something like, big girls or big boys don't cry, just get over it. So it's not their fault, because nobody taught them how to deal with feelings except to shut them off. So let's open up their brain and see some of their fears, shall we? When you share your feelings, they hear that as criticism, that they've done something wrong. And because they don't know what to do with feelings, they fear that they're failing and that nothing they do is good enough. And they don't want to feel like a failure, so that's why they tell you not to have those feelings. They might get, like, overwhelmed by emotions, fearing that this tidal wave will just take you both over like a bottomless abyss or like opening Pandora's box and someone's going to get hurt. So they shut down to protect you both. They're also afraid of feeling smothered by your needs if you're too demanding. They're afraid of being trapped or engulfed and losing their freedom. And finally, they fear that you'll reject them if they open up. So it's safer just to keep it inside. So here's what they need to open up. Withdrawers usually need you to create a safe space where you can make requests without being critical or demanding. They usually want to give you what you need if you speak in a soft voice, you don't yell, and you tell them that you want to find a solution that works for both of you so they don't feel trapped. So I learned to do these three things, and I teach how to do these things in my one-on-one -on -one coaching. Number one, soothe the needs and fears that I just talked about. So I learned to tell my partner, you're not trapped. I'll give you all the space you need and I'll be here when you get back. I love you and I want us to work through this together. Or maybe you'll find that one of these statements might work. I accept you just the way that you are. I'm not going to reject you if you share your truth. And then don't. Or, I understand that my feelings overwhelm you. I promise to talk in a soft tone of voice and ask for what I need. And then we can work through it together. 
I want to give you what you need too. How does that sound? Can you see how statements like that soothe the fears that I just mentioned? And number two, I gave myself compassion for my need for closeness. And I asked myself how else I can get that need met with friends and family as I gave him space. And I filled my life with other fun activities, trusting that by giving him what he needs, he will want to give me what I need when he comes back. And I understand that he needs space to accomplish his life mission. And I want to support that because that's an important part if you want to maintain a relationship for life. And number three, I learned how to express my needs in a vulnerable way instead of demanding way. So instead of getting upset at him, I tune into the fear underneath my upset. And you'll notice the difference between a request and a demand here. Because I'd say, I'm feeling insecure. Can you hold me and caress my back for a few minutes and tell me that you care about me? And can you guess what happened next? When I did these things, instead of withdrawing, my partner stepped up and he started being more loving. He began to see that his withdrawing contributed to my fear that he might abandon me. He could see his part in contributing to my clingy and demanding behavior. So he learned to soothe and comfort me. And then our fighting stopped. And now we enjoy emotionally connected conversations when one of us feels upset. Would you be surprised to learn that there's specific words that you can say? and specific actions that you can take for your specific partner that can instantly and magically soothe them so they melt into connection and feel all the love sink right back in. And that's what I teach people how to do when I work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Because these might seem like simple steps, but when you're caught in the heat of the moment, they can be hard to put into practice on your own. So if your partner is withdrawing, make sure that you schedule a back to love strategy session with me so you can learn how to get them to come out of their shell and experience love and passion and intimacy once again. Even if you're interested and your partner isn't, that's okay because there's a lot that you can do to turn the relationship around and inspire your partner. So if you want to save your relationship today, click the link below. And if you like this video, make sure that you click the like button too. It helps me to get this work out to more people. And I look forward to helping you feel close again.